It's April 21st, 2021. <laughs> this is the Wrestling Inc. Podcast, NXT on Tuesday. I'm Glenn Rubenstein, joined by Alfred Kanawa and NYC Demon Diva, Isa. How's it going, everybody? Nailed it. Good, good. It's going good. I feel good. How do you feel, Isa? I feel great. It was a, it was another fun show to watch, easy to watch, so can't complain. Well, I've been freaking out because now I'm convinced my house is haunted after uh, the other night. Yeah, it yeah. Isa really I laid it you. on the other night. I got <laughs> a bunch of Amazon Blink cameras set up today. It's going to be like paranormal God. activity in here. Oh, Wait, man. did you get did you get like the white noise reader? Oh, did you get I like a. Oh, you need to get the heat thing. You know what I'm talking about? The heat detector in the dark that like will detect like a heat spot. I'm, I'm, I'm dead ass. I'm dead. Okay. I just found that for New Yorker. Dead ass, get one. But for real. <laughs> First thing, when we did the home inspection, they say, well, we can do the regular home inspection for like $300. But for $150 extra, we can do an infrared vision and look inside the walls. And so I called them and I said, you're not going to offer me the Predator Vision home inspection and not expect me to add that on. So just tack that <laughs> onto the bill and let's get this going. Let's get this rocking. Because I want to see well, for, what's in the walls of the For house. pizza, for pizza, I will do the, the the creepy one. Like I will find out if your house is haunted. Just for pizza. You don't even have to Oh, just for pizza. That. I thought you were gonna say for pizza, pizza. you're like using the pizza and light, alcohol. You know? Pizza and alcohol, and I'll come in and tell you. And if you need it, I'll bring some sage, <laughs> some holy water. I'll cleanse it too. <laughs> like a ghost hunter show. This sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah. I love that stuff. Like, Low-key ghost hunting. Just give me pizza, booze. I'll show up yeah. and be like, oh, yeah, your house is haunted. 1,000%, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good to be here tonight. This was what NXT does best. Um, I thought this was amazing tonight, seeing what we saw with the show. This is my favorite type of NXT. We've got storytelling. We've got matches that are bangers. We've got... Uh, Awesome women's matches, really showcasing the women's division well. This was cool. I felt like this was better than last week. And I think now they're going to get back into the rhythm. And maybe the upside is that Vince and the powers that be aren't breathing down their neck as much. So NXT just gets to be NXT again. Uh, possibly it was a, it was a fun show to watch again for two weeks in a row. Um, I, it was easily it's easy to digest. I lost track of the two hours. I'm like watching and next thing I know, I'm like, oh my God, I really gotta start setting up for the podcast. So you I can't I have no complaints. And and that's listen, NXT on Tuesdays is just like a whole new world to me because I watch it distraction free and it makes me realize things that I never paid attention to before. I'm into them now. So yeah, I yeah. like that. I have fun. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot that wasn't advertised that was on the show that was yeah. actually very good on this show. So I just wish they would have, you know, promoted some of the stuff that they eventually ended up having. They didn't even have their main event set until after the first segment. So, you know, I'm kind of worried about what that would do ratings wise. But I agree with you guys in that it did seem like a show that uh, was flowed very well. Everything that happened was to build toward a future storyline and a particular division. And it just seemed like a very coherent wrestling show. Maybe NXT gets a bump because it comes right after Raw. So it makes it seem like it's so much better than it really is. <laughs> we have our standards so low after Raw, but I mean, you know, this is a fine NXT show. I don't That's know. A good point. That's, a good point. <laughs> That's a good we point. That's a good point. We have that. That's nice, Raw. Oh, yeah. I feel like uh, sometimes it's that way. You get dragged out to a meal with like acquaintances or people, family, and you're like, oh, we have to eat at this restaurant. Okay, fine. And then you're thinking, after, after I'm going to go to some place, I'm going to get Del Taco after. And that Del Taco is the best food you've ever had in your life. Because <laughs> it's, it's making up for the disappointing meal. That's what and NXT is the Del Taco of professional wrestling. You just can never go wrong with it. Hey, you give me a burrito, taco, and French fries, I'm there. I don't like Del Taco. What's that? I don't like Del Taco. Really? Uh, you know, I like the spicy quesadilla from Del Taco. I think those The hit. spicy jack quesadilla, back when I used to eat cheese, spicy jack quesadilla is where it's at. Yeah. I don't like, even think so we good. have Del Tacos. Do we even have it? I never seen Not a Del New Taco York. around no, here. They're <laughs> everywhere here. Well, I mean, in Southern California, there are more Del Tacos yeah. than McDonald's. Like, they are <laughs> everywhere. There might be a Del Taco in my backyard, like, literally. <laughs> oh, my God. I <laughs> dropped, like, 25 pounds since the start of this year. There's a Del Taco that delivers to my house in Vegas through DoorDash. Yeah. And I'm oh. just like, watch out, because this is going to go <laughs> off the rails really quick. But hey, let's jump into the show tonight, because tonight's so good. 
We don't need tangents. We don't need distractions. We don't need 80s and 90s movie references and talking <laughs> about our love of fast food. We should talk about the show. Wow. Some people in the chat are like, Dig, what's this Flowers for Algernon moment for Glenn? What's this awakening? Uh, but tonight, <laughs> Kylo Riley, fresh off his own sanctioned match against Adam Cole. And uh, man, him with Cameron Grimes mixing it up in that promo. How great is Cameron Grimes' character right now? Uh, he is amazing, and that's somebody that I was just um, pointing out that I might have not been into back when I used to watch with distractions. I thought he was entertaining, you know, but it wasn't somebody that I would stop to watch. I would probably switch channels when he came on, unfortunately. I don't think his gimmick is for everybody. Now he shut me up. I loved everything about him tonight. I love him mentioning the NSTs and, and the, the, the promo backstage. We'll get to that later with Ted DiBiase. I don't know. I, I am really high on what he's doing right now. And I really love the promo about Kyle O'Reilly. And he teased certain things. And then they kind of visited that backstage with Karrion Cross later on. This this Kyle O'Reilly, I'm here for him. Like, I didn't know he had this in him. And now I don't want him to slow down at all. I like everything that he's saying. I like his attitude. He came out with that I beat Adam Cole swag tonight. There was something different about him, and I loved it. Different look. Almost shades of Orange Cassidy tonight when we saw yeah. Kyle A lot of people came for him because of that. He did, uh, and he had the fedora too, which... <laughs> yeah. 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 I will say, um, as talented as Kyle O'Reilly is, he just doesn't seem like a baby face. Um, just based on how he acts, he's a very right. unlikable baby face. And they're really positioning <laughs> him in that role as like a top baby face. And he's got this kind of his delivery is almost like he's always challenging like me to fight, not his opponent. He always seems like he wants to fight me uh, at just watching at home on TV. So there's something that rubs me the wrong way about him as a baby face. And I hope it uh, ends up working. But I completely agree about uh, Cameron Grimes. He's one of my favorites going in NXT. So good. I love the fact that they're actually pulling the trigger on the Ted DiBiase thing. I think that's going to be so much fun, uh, which hopefully it'll reveal to actually Ted DiBiase makes it a cameo on camera and they do something because that'll be a lot of fun. Oh, they have Cameron to. Grimes was great. Yeah. yeah, they absolutely have to they do have something to. Like that. So good tonight. You should interview Kyle O'Reilly offer just so you can start the interview with like, so you're a very unlikable baby face. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it just for you. <laughs> yeah, and Look, please. That, like, how, how, how do you walk that fine line of being a baby face yet still unlikable? You're uh, such a jerk, Kyle. Tell me how you pull it off. Yeah, but yet I'm rooting for you. It's very weird. Uh, but Cameron <laughs> Grimes, lovable heel, right? That's the thing. He's the most likable heel. His personality is so lovable, and he's a bad guy. And Kyle O'Reilly is so unlikable, and he's a good guy. It's really weird seeing them go back and forth tonight. You know, the other difference between NXT and the, the main roster, sorry, Justin Labar, but uh, on the main roster, you look at the way they want to capitalize on stuff like Pokemon Go and, like, the obvious trend. With NXT, they're doing NFTs. They're talking about GameStop. Yeah. Like, they're a yeah. lot more, I think, on the cutting edge of, like, what's cool. Um, and I think their audience, I mean, and self-admittedly, like NXT fans are bigger nerds than the wrestling nerds. Although yeah, I think you'd have to be a huge wrestling nerd to watch Raw and have that dedication. But I think they know that their audience is much savvier, much smarter, and they don't have to spoon feed them everything. And it also doesn't feel forced. When you mm -hmm. see a pop culture reference in the main roster, it's just, yeah, of course, they had to get that in there. Where with NXT, it just flows so organically when they include these little knobs in there. Like, I, I it's, it, there's a difference in the way that they're delivered and presented at NXT against the main roster. Completely agreed. And, and that little thing in terms of how comfortable they are making those current references just makes the scene, the show come off as more fresh. I think that's something that Raw yeah. and SmackDown can learn from NXT in that just consistently incorporating pop culture in their shows because what we're watching is variety TV. Like wrestling's always going to kind of be a snapshot of the society. And when they're not making those references, they don't have to do it all the time. But when it doesn't seem like they're in touch with the current society, it makes the show come off as old and, and tired. Right. No, I agree. Jody Shauna Jenkins, Canadian $5. It's like uh, $4.25 American, saying, I'm way off and saying I could totally see Dexter Rumors showing up in the Firefly Funhouse, leather apron working with the toys. Uh, I similar that. vibe. I can see it. Who knows? I actually love that. I hadn't <laughs> thought about it. That's a good one. I would love to see it. Yeah. Um, so, Alfred, I want to get your thoughts on this. Am I insane, or was LA Knight versus Dexter Loomis the first match we went into? And we did set up at the end of that promo for Grimes versus O'Reilly in the main event tonight. But Dexter Loomis versus LA Knight, this felt like a takeover. Yeah, I mean, it did have the intensity, and especially because this is kind of a few that just started at TakeOver, and it's something that you felt they were going to build toward. And so them just giving it away and first thing out, um, 
it, it did feel like this should have actually been on TakeOver, and they wrestled it like it was kind of with the intensity of a TakeOver match, although it did have a weird finish. Yeah. Uh, but I will say, I, I'm just not into this LA Knight thing. I've given it enough of a chance. I just can't do the LA Knight thing. I, I cannot do LA Knight. Why? Why Why can't you? Like, what bothers you? I want to know if, if... Everything about that. He can talk. I'm not doubting he can talk. He just doesn't make me care about professional. He's like, uh, there's this character in Impact Wrestling named Johnny Swinger. He's very funny. He's very entertaining. He's like an 80s wrestler trapped in 2021. Right. And he pulled it off very well. LA Knight reminds me of that in that he's an attitude era wrestler trapped in 2021, except the difference is he doesn't seem to be in on the joke. It just like, he actually <laughs> does these gimmicks like, like doing a catchphrase in 2021, one catchphrase after another is gonna work. It just seems like he's doing cut, copy, paste, and I just haven't felt anything yet with this LA Knight thing, but hopefully he proves me wrong. It just, I just, I struggled with LA Knight tonight. I'm just not gonna lie. I, I, I think it's also the fact that he's in a feud with Dexter Loomis, and I know that he's supposed to be a creep, but I just love him. I love him, and I think everybody loves him, and, and, and it makes it a little bit difficult for LA Knight. I thought the match itself, though, was very enjoyable. It was very good. Um, yeah, I, I but I'm with you on that. I, I, I feel weird with LA Knight. I've gone back and forward when he debuted it. Okay, he seems like he's going to be a big deal, but then he loses. Then he loses at the gauntlet match, and then he's feuding with somebody that I'm really mm. into right now. So I feel like maybe that's what makes you not get behind him. He could have been somebody that could have responded to the open challenge, for example, or something oh, yeah, like that really. and keep him away yeah. from um, Dexter Loomis because I just I just feel like Dexter is more likable. Even though he's not supposed to be, he's more likable now. So putting LA Knight in that position might be hurting his character a little bit. Uh, so we did get tonight a uh, continuation of the Dexter Loomis, Indy Hartwell storyline. <laughs> and Indy ringside... <laughs> distracting Dexter. That's why LA Knight got the win here. So uh, to your point, you know, about not feeling LA Knight, I think Dexter goes over when the match does open and take over. Um, but man, they're, they're already setting the bar high. Like this was not like a half-assed opening match. They really brought it tonight. This was really yeah. good. Um, after uh, we had Indy and Dexter getting ready. They were having that moment. They were sharing that moment, breathing the same oxygen, fans chanting kiss. And I wanted you to know it the way interferes. And uh, pulls Hartwell off the apron, <laughs> carried her away forcibly. I was so, so sad. We... I was so sad when they interfered. I wanted to see that kiss. Well, yeah. she's off okay. somewhere being deprogrammed right now, I'm sure. Are we to believe that they haven't done anything? Like, even though they went off together on their own and got their alone time, are we to believe they still haven't even kissed yet? It's NXT. They're, they're innocent. Not if on this TV. Were raw, <laughs> oh, yeah. this was, if this were raw, they'd be insinuating the worst things. Right. <laughs> I, I, I like I like the storyline between them. Yeah, I, I, I'm I thought into they did it. a good job with that. It was it was legitimately funny tonight. The stuff that they did. Yeah, Actually, it's, yeah. It's, it's, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. It's, it's, it's weirdly sweet to think that Dexter Loomis is like such a gentleman. He is. <laughs> he's a he, he's a nice guy. You can see it. He has it in him. No, oh, absolutely. Uh, Stella Justin Lopez, four ninety nine. Kyle O'Reilly was out there looking like Orange Cassidy's illegitimate brother. Uh, <laughs> and Jody Chan Jenkins, Canadian two dollars, saying you agree with Alfred Knight is like the early version of The Rock. Yes, oh. he's like The Rock if The Rock overstayed his welcome. That's what he is. Oh damn! <laughs> the Rock never left Hollywood. He's just still here doing the people's eyebrow in twenty twenty one. That's what LA Knight is. Damn! I hope you improve. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know where you're coming from. I see it too. But listen, I was here for Indy and Dexter, and that's the thing. LA Knight was not the front and center of this right. match and feud. We were here for something else. And don't get me wrong, he's a good athlete. Like he, like to your guys' point, I thought he had a pretty good match with Dexter Loomis. There are two big guys flying around there, and he looks fine in the ring. It's just uh, there's just something missing for me. Isn't it funny how on this podcast I noticed this across every show I've covered, with the rare exception, we make it a point to like caveat and try and put over talent in some way like i'm sure he's really nice as a person i've heard good things about him he's super talented <laughs> but like i just hate his character you know <laughs> it's not him yeah you i think know? for me it is him but uh i'm just saying he's a, he's a, he's a good athlete, but uh, personality wise <laughs> this savage <laughs> have, you been drinking? Drinking to say this? have you been drinking tonight no no i, I don't <laughs> oh. think that <laughs> 
He's just not my favorite uh, wrestler. Listen, no, I can't clearly. Them all. We all clearly, have someone we don't really like, right? Sure. Clearly me, not your guy. For me, it's not a hot thing to say. Do the people in the chat, what do you guys think about LA Knight? Go ahead. You don't have to super no, chat. Like no. I want to see the, the pulse of the temperature. Sergio Cardenas saying LA Knight is money on the mic. Uh, LA's getting some. Uh, getting I think he's fine on the mic. I think he can talk, but every single promo he does sounds exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, so uh, <laughs> let's talk about Beth Phoenix tonight talking <laughs> to. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to save you from this one because this is going <laughs> to divulge poorly. Uh, Io Shirai talking to Beth Phoenix, and I love this setting up Io and Frankie Monet tonight after at the end of this interview but uh, let's talk about first alfred first tell the people what happened in this interview and what you thought of uh where eo stands right now now she came across so what i liked about this interview is they did kind of like a film study thing where beth phoenix is instead of just being like your basic backstage interview with a generic question beth phoenix is showing her clips of her match with raquel gonzalez and having her react to it so it's you know it's a pretty cool thing to watch and then um ty valkyrie or frankie monet uh, interrupts with her dog of course her dog interrupted first it was kind of funny and then had her back and forth with EO and had a passive aggressive remark toward Beth Phoenix that she's been watching ever since she's a kid. And um, then I guess they ended with uh, uh, EO Shirai said that she likes cats. She's a cat person. Yes, time. I enjoyed that. That's the ultimate insult to somebody like uh, Frankie Monet. So very surprising that they're kind of feeding EO Shirai, it seems like, to Frankie Monet. So that'd be a huge win for Frankie Monet right off the bat to beat EO Shirai, who essentially didn't yeah. lose for years. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. I was like, really? This is what they're going to set up? She can't debut and lose. Like, I went, I have so many thoughts in my, like, in my head when that happened. I love the segment between Beth Phoenix and Io Shirai. I thought she came off likable. I really wanted to get just a little more intake. As an interviewer, I wish she would have gone more into, you You asked for that fight. Like, how mm -hmm. do you feel about that? Because yeah. Io called out Raquel. You got what you asked for and you lost your title because of that. Um, that being said, I EO turns like turned me into a fan of hers. So in the beginning I was like, yeah, whatever, she doesn't do it for me. And that title ring and her matches defending her title completely won me over. Uh I, I wanna see if Frankie can beats her because that would be mm. such a big deal and that will escalate her to the to to Raquel. Like where do you yeah. go if you if you beat Eo, you know? Um her doggy looked amazing. I loved her dress. I actually <laughs> own that dress. It's a beautiful dress. And listen, I'm here for it. It's it's such a stack women's division that every time you see somebody just stare at someone or some kind of face off, you're excited because every woman in that division is so talented that you want to see all of them face each other at some point. So nothing, nothing gets boring between them. All of them, you can you can have so many feuds in that division that you can have a, an entire pay per view of women fighting That's each other point. there. Mm -hmm. Great point. I'd love to see a pay per like a NXT pay per view TV special, whatever they want to do, an all women yeah. show. Like they could easily do that and run out and like you know not even have women booked on that show. That's how loaded it is, and that there would it's be people insane. off that show if they did a two hour women's show. It's insane. I was thinking about that earlier, and I'm like, this this division is so stacked, and we have Frankie, who hasn't even debuted in the ring yet. We had an in-ring debut tonight that went pretty well. She was oh amazing God. in oh, there. So it's match? just like, it's like, how does it keep getting better? Every week you're like, you know, you look at their match at TakeOver, and you go, wow, this division is crazy. And then they just keep opening and opening. And like, it's like, the NXT women's division is so exciting to watch. I'm here for all of it. Yeah. No, I agree. I think WWE needs an all-women show. I think they've got so much talent. It's better storylines. I think oftentimes the in-ring action has been better, just better characters, more watchable characters. Um, I mean, the success rate, right, of like the watchability rate of the women's roster, I feel so much higher than what we're seeing on the men's roster. And I wish they would go this route, but I don't know. Unless they're going to, you know, expand to Thursdays, I think it would take USA or maybe E or Peacock or somebody just offering them a really fat check and then maybe it'll happen. But I don't know. Uh, but no, this interview was good. And I like that she's in this feud. The thing with EO, though, is if she's on her way out and getting called up, I mean, absolutely put Frankie Monet over. Right. Right. Sure. That's exactly what I was thinking about. I'm like, there's no way Io loses unless she's on her way out, which would only be fair for her to just 
put somebody over big time and come to the main roster. But I'm afraid of her. I'm afraid of anybody coming to the main roster. I say that every week and I'm not afraid to keep saying it. <laughs> I want NXT to stay on his own little bubble on Tuesdays and just keep him there. You know, I want to be, I'm like a protective mom keeping the NXT babies there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Seriously, it's just, uh, it, it decimates the show. They, they don't go on to bigger and better things. It's like when somebody leaves SNL, usually they go to do movies or a sitcom. <laughs> You know, right. they don't go from SNL to like the bad years of Mad TV. No one makes that lateral move, you know? Yeah. And I feel that's what it's like. It's what Monday Night Raw is like. That's a great course. parallel. Like, kind of like Tim Meadows leaving <laughs> SNL or Chris Kattan leaving SNL, or it's just like, oh man, he should have stayed. Yes. Right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, of course, people can guess that I love this. Brazongo versus, versus the Grizzled Young Veterans. Uh, Brazongo making quite an entrance, their tribute to the UK tonight uh losing battle Weren't they but pirates two weeks ago what's going on here they're so good <laughs> and it doesn't matter if they win or win or lose it's awesome when they do get the win and they do get the opportunity but they're just they're i think the best utility players that nxt has you could yeah. do anything with them and they're great tv a lot of entertainment value there and remember they had that uh detective show the fashion police oh, uh, on the fashion oh, police good. i loved it a couple of months it was like the best thing on smackdown it was like legitimately funny yeah yeah, I was. I, I, I used to love those segments. I actually miss them. Okay. Um, they are so entertaining. I just I just thought it was funny. Like, as soon as I saw what was happening, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's just NXT sometimes. Like, even when they do this, I don't want to say humor, but more entertaining side of things, it still makes sense, and it's still good in the ring. Cameron Grimes, and now we have it with Brisango. Even when they're doing something that's just for the, for the giggles, they still come in and kick ass, and that's what I love to see. It feels like when we're watching a main roster show and you see that comedic value, that's all there is. This person is just going to be booked horribly wearing NXT. You don't get that. Yeah. No, I think this was really good tonight. I mean, even with the Grizzled Young Veterans getting that win, um, this match was entertaining as hell. And uh, Grizzled Young Veterans, I still think that's perhaps the worst name in all of NXT. And let me remind you, NXT has a performer named Oni Lorkin and he wrestled tonight. Cause he's a young veteran, somehow worse name than that. <laughs> it's a nice play on words, but you know, I can, it, it's not, it doesn't really roll off the tongue. Grizzled young veterans. It doesn't Grizzled make any vets. sense. How are you young and a veteran? <laughs> yeah. I think they're overthinking this one. Cause there's that old term grizzled old vets, but they're trying to say they're young yet. They wrestle maybe like veterans. I think they're saying they captured the old spirit. Kind of like FTR does. Yeah. Wow, Alfred. That was deep. I mean, that's, I like the, that. I mean, that's all I can figure from why they would call themselves Grizzled Young. Who and knows? you know, you know, you know, when it came up, they pitched it to like HBK and they're like, we're Grizzled Young Vets. And they're like, what, you like work with animals and you're really bitter about it? And they're like, no, like veterans. He's like, then you have to say veterans because internally people are really going to, really going to mess this up. Uh, yeah. you know, they're, they're definitely talented. Uh, I, I'm always rooting for Brazongo. I think they, and they still they haven't had them. the belts, right? They got they were oh, they did, did, for a bit, they right? did. did they? Yeah. it was oh, a very right, short right. reign, but they did win it. Now I remember that was right around the time I stopped watching. And I think that's part of my justification. I was like, I can I can relax now. Tyler Breeze has held a belt in <laughs> WWE and NXT. It finally happened. Um, yeah. but no, they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, Mackenzie Mitchell backstage trying to get an interview with Indy Hartwell. Talk about Dexter Loomis, but you know, the way away they were blocking think, man they were blocking do you think <laughs> okay i'm gonna ask you first alfred do you think this storyline is going to have a satisfying conclusion are they gonna move to the suburbs like wandavision uh with dexter and in indy i mean uh, sadly this is just gonna end like everything else where there's gonna be a big split uh at least first by the way i keep Thinking in the back of my mind, this is all going to lead to Indy Hartwell screwing over Dexter. Hmm? We're like, I'm just waiting for her. No, 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 no. We already, we already had Alexa do that to the Fiend. Let's not do it again. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you want to see that again, that would pretty much be the same thing, essentially. But yeah, um, yeah I think it might build to, hopefully not. Hopefully I'm wrong about that because this is a fun storyline. And it looks like it might build to Dexter and Indy being like a quirky couple together. Hopefully we get a little bit of that if there is going to be a split. We get that beforehand. But uh, I just think that uh, they, they're really putting a lot into it. So I just think there's going to be a swerve at the end, you know? Issa, your, yeah. your hopes, your dreams? 
Yeah, I want I want to see them work together, even if Indy has to turn on the way. I think you can, if you did tonight to read the room, you did see that everybody is into them as a couple. The crowd was going crazy. Like, it was such a cool moment. So if they were using that segment just to see how this is reading, I think they should go in the direction of, of booking them together and, and splitting Indy from the way. Mm-hmm. I want to see them have a weird, weird creeps kind of, <laughs> couple, <laughs> maybe maybe they can go against Gargano and Candice. They don't really have that'd a lot awesome. going on right now. Oh, so be, listen, I I would like to see that. Let's see where it goes. But I want I I want, I'm here for them together. King Rail saying NXT needs someone from the main roster to go to them like Finn did. I think Sammy would be great. With some of the upcoming talent. It's been a while, right? I mean, uh, Ember Moon returned in NXT. We had Brazongo yeah. go to NXT, Finn go to NXT. But you remember there were all these talks uh, a year or two ago that, oh, there's going to be some movement both ways. You know, we haven't seen that. Uh, Issa, who's your pick? I will send the people that are not being used right now. So like a Mustafa, a, a Ricochet. I think those people would just kill it down there. And we're not even seeing them right now. You have... Umberto, well, we saw him on TV yesterday, Garza. There's so many of them that are just literally sitting backstage. That's how we see them as. Why not put him in NXT? At the same time, NXT is kind of stacked right now. You didn't even see everybody tonight, and that show flew by. So is NXT, are they really going to benefit from going to NXT? Are they going to fit in? Or, you know, you can't just get down there and be sandwiched in a storyline when everything's yeah. NXT is also flowing smoothly. So it's, it's, it's a 50-50 here, but I would say somebody like a Ricochet or a Mustafa if I have my pick. Alfred, uh, per King Rail's point, could you see Sammy, or do you think they have too much going on for him right now? Yeah, I do think he's uh, kind of in the thick of it right now. I mean, I don't know what they have planned for him moving forward. Sammy would be a fun choice, but I could see Aleister Black. I mean, that's somebody who uh, I think did kind of go up to the official saying he wanted to go to NXT, and I guess he was shot down, but... Uh, I would like to see Aleister Black go down to NXT. I think that's when he was at his best. I think they got him. They knew exactly what to do with him. They knew how to protect his mystique. And that's something that, I mean, within a couple of weeks of him on the main roster, they completely let it out of the bottle in terms of that kind of magic that he has. And I think uh, he'd be a better fit in NXT. I just absolutely love this character in NXT. And do you think Aleister Black didn't get cut because they forgot he works there, given how little they featured him? Yeah. I think they have something for him up and coming. There's been a lot of rumors that they're working on, on something for him. So we'll see. Jackson Callens, a man who has been in this exact spot in my kitchen. What's up, Jackson? <laughs> uh, y'all thinking either recently released uh, stars could have been sent to NXT instead of kick to the curb. I mean, I think there was so much talent that they let go of. Yeah. I mean, any of them, even Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas should have come back and had a triumphant return to NXT. We hadn't seen him in forever, though. Like, yeah. you know, um, they probably forgot that he was there. And then when they were going through the list, they were like, oh, Bo Dallas still works here? Like, I, that's sad to say, but we had not seen him on TV in a long time. And the iconic, especially with those tag builds that they just made in NXT, that makes no sense to me that you created a whole other women's division, women's tag team division, and you let go of one of your most legitimate tag teams. Like, it, it still blows my mind. And Samoa Joe will work anywhere you put him. So put him back in NXT, he would have killed the commentary or as a wrestler. Yeah, no, I think it, the Iconics would have gotten a hero's welcome if had they gone back to NXT. Yeah. Like, that's going to be a pretty hot act on the indie scene when they're able to go out and do their thing um, as friends again in terms of Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. I think they're uh, going to be really fun on the indies because I think a lot of people like the Iconics. A lot of people can agree that they were broken up kind of prematurely and out of nowhere, and there's a lot of unfinished business there. So I've got my eyes on them in terms of post-WWE. Mm-hmm. Me too. I'm hoping that whoever picks them up picks them as a package deal and they end up together wherever they go, even if they get single pushes. Again, I've said this millions of times, even if you wanted to give one of them a single push, you didn't have to break them up. You can still do it with them together. So, mm-hmm. If I had any influence, pull, or power in Hollywood, I'm telling you, they're like the Laverne and Shirley of professional wrestling. You could build <laughs> something around them. They don't even need to go to a promotion. They could have their own show. Yeah. Um, they're so funny. They're so good together. Like there's so much you could do with them, and uh, I think just sky's the limit. Uh, John Cena's bald spot five dollars saying Keith Lee back to NXT since they're doing nothing with him on Raw. I think the Keith Lee thing is due to like not being clear. I don't think yeah. they're not doing anything with him because they don't want to. I think he hasn't been clear for something. I mean, the rumor mm. has it that he was to win the U.S. title. Riddle was never supposed to hold the U.S. title, so I think they have plans for Keith Lee. They just want to make sure he's one hundred when they when they pull the plug on those plans. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that was supposed to be pretty much his spot, and I think that uh, he hasn't really talked about it, but there is something going on health-wise uh, that no. he hasn't been able to share yet, I think. Uh, so he'll we'll hear from that. But, yeah, I think uh, I still want to see some of Keith Lee in the main roster. I have a little bit of a slimmer of hope that I'm holding on to that hopefully they find out what to do with him, but I still want him to get his rightful shot on the main roster. So I, I, I keep conf- – I'm sorry? No, I think he will. I was saying Keith Lee, he will. So I have now confused myself completely on the correct pronunciation of her name. Saray or Sarai? Sarai? They said it both ways. I think it's Sarai, but they did say it both ways throughout the match. And Vic Joseph, I think, slipped up and said Sarai and then corrected himself to Sarai. But um, I think it's Sarai. I think it's Sarai as well, but I I don't know. I don't know. I read it and I'm like, I, I hear people saying it both ways. So Yeah, they did. So I'm, I'm not sure which one it is officially, but let's go with Sarai. Maybe it's Sarai, actually, now that I think about it. Did it Sarai? See, <laughs> it Sarai. Now let me preface this again. I feel like I have to say this about every six months on this podcast, ever since my Neidhart Needhart debacle. Uh, my last name, people my entire life have said Rubenstein, Rubenstein. I have zero preference. So I just naturally assume that everyone else has that flexibility. You know, usually it's last names I get it wrong. Oh, but sorry, so I, I see what you're yeah. saying. I have that with my last name too. People say Kanua or Kunua, and I'll just take either one. Yeah, it's like at this point, just just get my first name right. In fact, you can spell it with one N, and I won't even correct you because I'm yeah. just tired and broken down at this point. You know. <laughs> uh, but her match <laughs> versus Zoe Stark tonight. Alfred, your thoughts. I see. I think this felt like a takeover match. I really love this match. I don't know why they always insist on beating Zoe Stark. It seemed like they were doing something with her and putting together a video package. She hasn't been there for very long, but they just keep uh, putting her in that gatekeeper role um, so early in her career. But I thought she was solid in there. I thought Sarai looked the part. She had a great facials. She was really uh, good at being like a potent baby face that can get the crowd into the match, even though they didn't know who she was. She just had this instant connection with the crowd. And I thought she was really good. I thought. You know, a lot of times we see a lot of these kind of video packages promoting somebody and then they're not what they seem to be. And I thought this was very good in terms of her living up to the expectations. I was just surprised they let him go as long as they did to where she essentially yeah. a couple times almost lost this match. And it's like if yeah. you're promoting this woman as this dominant fighter from Japan who's going to come into NXT, you kind of wanted to be a little more dominant than that. But, you know, I had no problem with the match itself. I thought it was really good. Lisa? Yeah, I really enjoyed this match. I thought they did an excellent job at hyping her up throughout video packages throughout the day on social media, even showing her arrival. Um, the, she, I was not familiar with her, and I just loved everything that I saw tonight. And that's how you debut someone. If you're bringing somebody that people are not familiar with, you want to showcase them. That being said, I was like, "Wow, this match is going on a little too long." They're they're giving <laughs> the they're, they're they're she. I almost thought she was gonna lose. There was there was two spots there, and I think I actually recorded my reaction where I was like, "Wait, what?" Like I was like, "You cannot get me so hyped about this woman and then have her lose tonight," but they didn't. Overall, great showcase, great debut. I can't wait to see where they go next with her. Excited, excited. They 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 did a good job with her tonight. Yeah. I like that they gave her a real match. This wasn't like, um, oh, what was it? Oscar's first match against Dana Brooke in NXT, where it was kind of like, well, we know we know where this is going. You know, um, I think that they made it believable, and they kept them both looking very strong. And then Stark, after you know, they're they're hugging. Uh, Stark after gets attacked by Tony Storm, so that feud's continuing. Um, yeah, I thought this was great. And these women knew they had a good match because, like, as the three count was going down, you could see them congratulating each other and, like, uh, Zoe patting her on the head, like, "Oh, we killed it!" <laughs> yeah, and the way and the way that Zoe like did it, like, out of respect, like, you know, the way that she received her and asked Regal, "Please let me have this." It just felt it felt like such a feel good moment. And then Tony Storm, she she was mad, I guess. <laughs> yeah. cool. Like, whoa, that, that attack was brutal. Faces. Two strong yeah. baby faces coming out of this match it was great. Before this, we saw Cameron Grimes thought he bought an NFT, and Ted DiBiase uh, <laughs> outbid him. Stay tuned. I'm sure that storyline will uh, keep going for a while. WWE is all in on the NFTs. This is a company that didn't have full 1080 high definition cameras shooting until like a year ago, but NFTs, they're all over it. I'll tell you what, uh, Cameron Grimes is like a legitimate source for stock information and tips because, like, <laughs> 
Between NFTs, he talks about Dogecoin with Surge yesterday. I own a little bit of Dogecoin, and I made some good money yesterday. And a lot of this is game stuff. A lot of the stuff that he's been saying on TV is legitimately doing well. So you people, if you're not investing in stocks and you're not familiar with it, just follow Cameron Grimes, man. He will lead you to the promised land. <laughs> Cameron Grimes is using too many subreddits. That's where he's getting all his sources from. I'm telling you. <laughs> I bought all the meme stocks, and uh, it's not going so well. We are not to the moon yet, but, you know. Fingers you crossed, gotta, you gotta my, be patient. my Nokia and Blackberry stock that you know, Wall Street <laughs> Bets told me were a good pick. Fingers crossed, those uh, a bit of Blockbuster in there. Yeah, come. I, I buy Blockbuster in a heartbeat now. Yeah. Did you watch that oh, documentary my. the last? Oh, did I? Oh, so it. good. I'm going to this summer because of that documentary, I'm going to Bend, Oregon to go so see good. it. So good. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I'm over here. Like I actually, I actually kind of want to go to like <laughs> Nokia. <laughs> no, absolutely. It was it was very good. It was very nostalgic. They did a good job hitting on the nostalgia with that one. Yeah. Which is funny too, because when Blockbuster existed, that was never the cool video store. Like people did. I don't think people loved Blockbuster, but that was. It was like, for a little while. It was yeah. for a little while. It was like the McDonald's of VHS rental. Remember, they wouldn't. They didn't have. Uh, they they had like. Um, Oh, when a movie would come out, like a Tarantino film that was too bloody or violent, they would have like the yeah. edited version. Like there was, yeah, yeah. they did. As, as a right. film purist, like I liked my neighborhood video stars. Like that's what I was yeah. into. But, but that documentary but is fantastic. You don't know the struggle. Do you have to walk around a blockbuster for an hour or two waiting for someone to drop off that movie you're waiting for? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're staring at the cashier the whole time, and the cashier yeah. just packs you with the movie. <laughs> come on, those were the days. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking I would probably once every two or three months have a date that would go to Blockbuster and we would never end up settling on a movie. By the time we said the date was at Blockbuster, essentially, yeah. trying to figure out what to rent. Yeah. 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 Uh, Stella Justin Lopez, 499, saying the reports out there last week that WWE filmed return vignettes for Black. Let's see if they make it to the era. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I think, I hope they do something big. I think, I, I, I mean, you know, I don't I don't set my expectations very high with wrestling anymore. I know that's a sad statement to make, but I really <laughs> want to say good things for Alistair Black. Uh, Steve Marcuccilli, 499. If Cross is given the Goldberg streak push, what order would you have him beat Cena, Reigns, or Brock? And who would be Hogan? Oh, oh got it. Oh, like the Hogan of that group? Who breaks the streak? No, I think he means like who does he beat for the title? I think he's comparing them to one of them to Hogan, right? Yeah, didn't Hogan break Goldberg's streak? No, no, it was Nash who did. Oh, uh, sorry, Hogan was like sorry. his big win in his hometown where he won That's the title. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I he better not beat Reigns. Everybody else, I'm fine with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to beat Reigns either. Yeah. But if we had to do an order, I would say, wow, this is hard. Maybe Cena, Reigns, and then Brock. I mean, Brock has to be last in terms because that's like the one win that kind of means the most. Like you can beat Cena and he can come back from it. Reigns, you can unless, beat. You know, uh, unless Brock doesn't have a title and you let Roman Reigns run with a long title ring, then you have to save Reigns for last because he's beating Roman Reigns for the title who has held it for how many days? Then you have to do Cena. Brock and then Reigns. If sure. Reigns has the title now, if Brock has the title, then you switch those two around. But mm -hmm. that's that's ultimately. I know I said that, but I was like, it was joking. That's ultimately what I want them to do with that Roman Reigns title reign. Let him hold it for a long time. So when he drops it, it just means everything. But it needs to be to somebody that's at that level. And I think Karrion Cross can get there. He's just not there yet. But building right. a streak, a push, like he said, yeah, you could get him there easily. Yeah. We had a cruiserweight title open challenge match tonight. Oni Lorcan versus Kushida. Kushida getting a good, solid victory defense here. Uh, Issa, what did you think of this match? Good match. I thought it was I, – I, I guess I'm so trained – by the main roster of waiting for a DQ or somebody to interrupt that tonight I found myself waiting for that to happen on, on a couple of matches, not just this one. But I knew that Escobar was going to come out at some point because I was yeah. like, there's no way he drops that title and he just like doesn't care about it. Um, the match overall was great. I personally thought it was going to be either Escobar or Jordan Devlin answering that open challenge because, you know, them losing the title. So I was surprised to see Oni Lurkin come out and of course they put on a good match of course they did it's NXT I felt like every match tonight we're saying the same thing but the in-ring action tonight was excellent 
Yeah, it's like a striking exhibition. They just beat the hell out of each other. Uh, I love Kushida's new gear. I I'm really big on gear. It yeah. sometimes decides whether or not I'm into somebody. And as much as I appreciated Kushida's wrestling, I just didn't like wrestling in jeans, those wacky boots. But now he looks like an actual shooter, like an actual MMA athlete. And it just fits what he does in the ring so well that he just strikes mm -hmm. and he uses submissions. He looks like a grappler. And I, I really like the kind of barefoot grimy look and uh, I thought this was really good Oni Lorcan is he's never going to be the biggest personality or talker in NXT but he's a hell of a worker he's a guy who has good chemistry with somebody like um, Kushida who works really snug and I thought they had a good match tonight they did and then after there was the attack Raul Mendoza Joaquin Wilde and uh, Santos Escobar coming out and double teaming uh, yeah and then MSK came out to make the save six man brawl broke out we're going to have the match next week. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to see uh, uh, Legado del Fantasma work again in tag team, actually, because I don't think we've seen them wrestle at all since that match they had at uh, Stand and Deliver, and they just made instant fans out of me. I never really, you know, I always thought they were good, but they just wrestled such a great match that I, I couldn't wait to see them in the ring again. So I'm looking forward to that. And thank Same. you for remembering the full name. Uh, Isa, I almost referred to them as Los Fantasmas, like the Menudo album and song. <laughs> so. Oh my God, I meant to send you something. I got to send it to you. Sir. It'll make you laugh. Oh, it, was a, it, was, it was, a, I was listening to Bad Bunny and he makes a Menudo reference. And for some reason I was like, why do I think of Glenn every time somebody makes a Menudo reference? <laughs> On my drive to Vegas, I went through Spotify's This Is Menudo playlist, like 60 songs. And uh, probably we'll listen to that again on the way home tomorrow. Hey, Bad Bunny's still on tickets like crazy, by the way. Oh, he yeah. Got to add a second show at the Forum in Inglewood. He's, I mean, he's tickets. He's breaking records, down. but, you know, nobody knows who he is, right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought see, I thought when they announced I thought he was going to team up with WWE and they were going to do some sort of wrestling concert tour, which I yeah. think would be awesome. Yeah, he, he sold out his very first um, yeah. Por Siempre tour, so like crazy, and this was pre-pandemic. Um, yeah. I thought he was smart to book this for next year. I have tickets, and I am already like so excited, but then I'm like, I gotta go, I gotta wait till next year. But listen, the guy's having yeah. a hell of a month, like SNL, then he won mm -hmm. a Grammy, then he killed it at WrestleMania. He sold out his sneakers with Adidas in a minute. He sold wow. out a tour. Tell me anybody that's having a better year than, than wow. Bad Bunny. Nobody. It's true. So good for him. Good for him. It's true. We saw Mercedes Martinez cutting a promo on uh, Raquel Gonzalez. And yes. uh, looking forward to that. That build is going to be awesome. Um, let's talk about Ever Rise versus Imperium. <laughs> oh, I will say, uh, okay, well, we, we can talk about that. This but... is where everybody, okay, let's just be real. Like, for me, this was when I was like, I've got to do some stuff before the main event, get ready for the podcast. Like, yeah, yeah. Maybe okay, place a I, target order, you know? I, I'm glad that Glenn is keeping it real because I was streaming before NXT, so I was like, oh, I cannot be wearing the same shirt for Wrestling Inc. So this is a perfect time to go and switch my outfit real quick. <laughs> well, so I just... us for not being too excited. This is unadvertised. It's a match between these two cold teams. When's the last time we even saw Ever Rise? Like, I mean, come on. What, what are we supposed to do with this? I, I, I watched it from a distance, from my closet. So I, 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 I'm, I'm assuming it was great. Did you watch it, Alfred? Or did I you mean, go? Oh, it was fine. Listen, the thing about Ever Rise is very, those two guys are really funny guys when they get the chance to be themselves or whatnot. But we're not really told who they are or what they're about. So they just kind of go out there and wrestle randomly. So it's hard to connect with that team. But right. I was great. The Raquel Gonzalez promo did kind of tease like a few between uh, yeah. the Coach Ty and Raquel, where she kept answering her yeah. questions for Raquel. So they're already going in that direction. I don't want them to, but yeah, yeah, they are. And here's the thing with Imperium: if Walter's not there, it's it's like the the new commercial with Sync. If you don't have JC or Justin, like come on, like think. yeah, like come on, like you know, Walter's Walter's the Justin Timberlake of of Imperium. And that's what everybody's wow. talking about. That's what everybody's saying. You're on fire with an obvious night, Glenn. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> He's the Beyonce, right? He's like the, the main person who isn't there. And they keep talking about him on commentary and saying we're doing Walter's bidding. And it's like, if you're yeah. not going to make them important outside of Walter, then it's, this thing's going to be death if we just have to deal with, you know, Walter's backup dances, essentially. Seriously, I mean, it's like you'd see those bands, those super groups, you'd be like, former member of Guns N' Roses, and you'd be like, is it Axel? Well, no. Is it Slash? No. 
Okay, is it Duff? Everyone loves Duff. No, it's not Duff. What about Izzy? What's Izzy been up to? It's not Izzy. You get down, it's like it's Gilby Clark, a guy who played keyboards for a cup of coffee on half an album. And you're just like, I don't know if that really counts. That's how you can tell when they say members of, if they don't say the member by name, you know it's not a member you've ever heard of. Because that's more famous. That's going to sell right. more tickets than actually. The name's going to sell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But with you're Imperium, right. that's the thing, man. It's like, Volter, man, that's the draw. That's what everybody wants to see. Yeah. yeah. It is. He just went dark on us. Oh, sorry, oh my I'm God. Is the ghost is the ghost in his house. Oh my God. We are about the ghost to is see. Him. See, you guys We're are about to see a possession, you guys. This is a first in podcast history. He's doing oh, it. Okay. <laughs> so I've got oh. my target shopper. Okay, so, so get this. So I've got a gate at the back of the house. And it's just one of those hook locks. But I need a master yeah. lock for it. I've ordered three locks. And if none of them have fit, they've either been too big or the, the bar was too thick. So I'm like trying again. So my fourth try to get a master lock that I can just <laughs> lock the back gate. <laughs> so my target shopper is like sending me photos. Oh, that's nice. oh wow. <laughs> yes. But apparently on my phone, when I switch off to do something, that's when it goes black. So I apologize. Right. Don't want to alarm people. I'm here. I'm not possessed. But oh my God, what was that movie they were showing trailers for tonight during all of NXT? That looks creepy as hell. What was it? Oh, I forgot the title of it. I know you're talking about, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember the name, but I was like, ooh, that looks... Like, like here's the thing. I don't want to watch that commercial at night in the dark. That commercial right. would freak me out alone. Oh, man. Today's was... scary movies are soft. <laughs> uh, I don't like jump scares. That's my big... Yeah, my big, that's, uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. They all rely on jump scares nowadays. You don't get a real scare. I hate it. Yeah. So Imperium won that match. Well, let's talk about the main event. Kyle O'Reilly versus Cameron Grimes. Uh, this again, this seemed like a takeover match. I know broken mm -hmm. record tonight, yeah. right? But Kyle O'Reilly getting that win. Um, I don't know what they do with them next. Maybe they can keep this feud going. But man, like Grimes is such a star. He was such a one note joke. And now he's a very, very credible main eventer. I love this match tonight. Yeah, I I never really paid a lot of attention to him in the ring until tonight. And I was like, I didn't realize all of that. Like, because you're so entertained by him and this and that, that you, me personally, didn't take him seriously before as a contender in the ring. And tonight I was so impressed by him. And he put on that match. And Kyle O'Reilly, I love the teasing with Karrion Cross before he was, like, going out. I don't know if that's where they're going with it. I was also waiting for an Undisputed Era member to come out and mm -hmm. interrupt because mm -hmm. I watched the main roster too much and I don't believe in clean finishes anymore, <laughs> I guess. But, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah I, I really enjoyed the match. They were just beating the crap out of each other. And I absolutely loved it. Uh, I... Do I want to see Kyle O'Reilly against Karrion Cross? Maybe, but I don't think that Adam... I, there's no way that Adam Cole is finished with him. So we'll see where it goes. But overall, excellent main event tonight. It was a fun match to watch. Oh, yeah. Kyle's going to lose to Karrion Cross. I don't think that's going to be competitive. Yeah. Yeah, they might. Just, I'm thinking they're going to squash him. I think... Um, I'm, but I really did like uh, this match a lot. I thought those guys worked so hard and... Yeah, like Cameron Grimes, for as funny as he is, is such a great worker. He's so athletic, and he does such things in the ring that are very creative. And, you know, he's like a mini Daniel Bryan in some ways when I see him oh. wrestle. So feels Wait, flashy to ride in the ring. mini Daniel Bryan? <laughs> yeah, in terms of, like, legacy, I'm not saying he's smaller than Daniel Bryan, but, like, you know, legacy-wise, it's like, a, you know, he's, he's a young Daniel Bryan. Let's say that. Maybe oh, not okay. mini. <laughs> but I thought, I thought these two were really good in, in there together. And, and Kyle O'Reilly is just so great with striking and, um, and the kicks that he does. And I like that move that he did where he did the tease of a kick and he slapped him in the face. That was really funny. Yeah. So these guys work really well together. Yeah, they were doing a couple of knee spots where you were just trying to see who was hitting each other the hardest with the knee spots. I was like, oh my God, like it was it was crazy. It was really, really good. Yeah. This was a great show tonight. This was fantastic. I like this better than the last week. It's like, this really? is what I want to see. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I did too. I did too. Last because week felt very, there was more in-ring action tonight than there was last week. Last week felt like there was more pressure. Like, okay, it's the first time on a Tuesday. Yeah. Got to do a, a little bit of a reboot for new people tuning in. Yeah. Uh, but tonight, this this was really good. And it's funny, though. How is it that NXT could have a match like the main event tonight or um, the women's match that went real long? How is it they can do that? It feels fresh and exciting. You don't get bored. But Raw gives us gives us 
a three segment match and it's just oh my god not this again you know? Because it's always the same. They're booking yeah. the same shows over and over again when NXT just feels fresh and there's so many feels just waiting to happen. You can fantasy book so many feels in NXT right now that we haven't seen yet. It's That's why it's a fun show to watch. And then to Issa's point where she was talking about she expected there to be outside interference, that is the reality of Raw, is that a lot of the matches do end with outside interference. So the fact yeah. that we have to get clean wrestling matches with finishes makes it seem more of a sport, and it actually puts more emphasis on how good the wrestling is. Which is always that NXT has always done right, which is why we there's that NXT group of people that just love it for what it is, because it just feels more... I don't know. There's there's entertainment, there's sports, but it doesn't feel forced. Nothing of what yeah. they do feels forced. In fact, I want to make a new rule that you get in between pay-per-views, if you're in a feud with someone, you get to wrestle them for 20 minutes total between <laughs> pay-per-views. Now, you could break that up in a bunch of little short matches or you can have one long match, sure. but that's it. You get 20 minutes. Maybe 15. Yeah, maybe yeah. less than that. I, I like that rule, but maybe if it's 10 to 15, yeah, that'd be yeah, good. Yeah, 10 to 15 minutes and that's it. You can, you know, and, and the rest can be promos. You can have story. You can have tape stuff. We can have all the recap videos, but fresh in your reaction. Got to keep it fresh. Gotta I don't know, Glenn. Going. Sometimes in the main roster, there's pay-per-views every two weeks. So that still might not work. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. But they got to do something to keep it fresh. Everything tonight. This felt so good. Love this show. It was great. Glad we were able to talk about it. Um, final thoughts. Issa, to you first excited to have another fun episode i think this might be a tuesday night thing like if they stay mm -hmm. consistent and they overdid last week i can't complain and another week that i'm looking forward to next week already and that's not a feeling that i'm left with watching other shows right so i'm excited good show alfred yeah this is a very good show i, I very much liked it and they did set up some stuff for next week that i'm, I'm looking forward to uh mercedes martinez versus dakota kai should be very interesting and i will say this Okay, something happened tonight where I think um, Indy Hartwell said that she got them a tag team match. And the guys oh, were looking yeah. for a tag team title match. And the, I don't know if that's – she didn't ever clarify that she meant that. And when they were promoting the matches for next week, they didn't promote a tag team title match between – so I think she meant a match with her and Dexter. Like, Indy and Dexter are going to wrestle a tag team match, which I, I think would be so great if they did that. Absolutely. Me too. Me too. Love it. Looking forward to it. So, Alfred, starting in May – you were going to join Issa and I on Friday nights on our SmackDown coverage. Yeah, Very much forward to it. You know, I'm having a great time with you guys tonight. And uh, we're going to have uh, great times uh, ahead to come. So we're going to have a good time. And this Breakfast Friday, Club. Jackson Callens is going to join myself and Issa on Friday night SmackDown coverage. Oh, yay! That's awesome. It was great meeting him over the weekend, meeting him and his lovely wife. It's cool hanging out. Wish we'd had more time. Did but, you meet a yeah. snake? No, no. Oh, come on. You don't travel with pets. Well, you probably bring that down. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't go anywhere. <laughs> I get on a plane and be like, this is my emotional support snake. You know? Yeah, and they have to let it in. Like, they have to. <laughs> okay. On that note, uh, I got more deliveries coming. I got more to do. I got to hit the road tomorrow. So we'll see you back here Friday on the Wrestling Gang Podcast. Oh, tomorrow night, though, you guys are covering, what's this, AEW? AEW tomorrow, me and Justin. Some upstart promotion out of Florida. <laughs> I don't know. They got a bunch of former WWE guys. Supposedly oh. it's good. <laughs> so you know, like, oh, tune man. in if you're curious. Watch tomorrow night with Justin and Alfred, and we'll catch you back here next time on the Wrestling Gang Podcast. Take care. <laughs>